Hi there, this is Jolene Anderson bringing you your sixth grade family update. I don't know about you, but I'm sure looking forward to a nice weekend to do some relaxing. But you know what helps me relax? Good quality information. So I just wanted to let you know of a couple of different things. First of all, January 28th is going to be the end of semester one. So keeping that in mind at our recent house meeting, which is all sixth grade teachers, and we all meet together, we really put our heads together to figure out supports for students and some creative interventions for those students who maybe just haven't quite found their groove yet. The first thing we made sure we did was align. So we're trying to be as consistent as possible in an environment that is anything but consistent, right? So to better support students in completing their assignments, what we found is when we really stick to the synchronous or live instruction time, and then the asynchronous or independent work time, we found some students were just cutting out after the live time and then they weren't engaging in that work. So we put our heads together and did some creative problem solving. So the sixth grade teachers will be following one of these three different options for class meetings. One, teachers can be begin the assignment during their live instruction. That means students can then focus on locating the assignment, reading it through for understanding, and even getting started on at least some of it before they leave the room. because. It's often the students who need more help that are maybe sometimes reluctant to go back into a room to ask for it. This way we're doing it during that live time. We're also, another option could be requiring students to complete a, up to a specific section of an assignment before they leave. This supports the same types of behaviors as the last one, but it also helps students maybe get a little bit further and allows them to have more options and availability for students to get help from teachers. And then lastly, another option is that they can shuffle their independent work time and guided teacher time, that async and synchronous work. They can shuffle it together to provide immediately accountability for expected work. For example, that could be like students all coming together in the class for a lunch, then the teacher saying, all right, you have 25 minutes, go ahead and read this article and answer these three questions in your OneNote, and then we're going to meet back to discuss it. We find that students are a lot more successful when they've got that time constraint and they know they need to do it in order to participate and move forward in the learning. When we talked about these different options, we all want to keep in mind that teachers provide breaks to move, use the restroom, you know, give their eyes a break from the screen, get a snack. I mean, we remember their little 11 and 12 year old bodies that we're teaching to. We also want to make sure that we excuse on time so students aren't late for their next class. And teachers are also asked to leave at least 20 minutes in between class periods so we can really maximize learning, but also maximize that time off of the computer. We're really trying to strike a nice balance. So some of our teachers are seeing lots of success. Some of us are seeing the students are kind of slowly but surely getting their feet under them and others are still kind of struggling. So we thought, how can we help support and provide interventions? So every student is welcome to stay after the group whole class activity for support. However, we find often the students who need it the most don't take advantage of it. So what we're going to do is students currently not earning at least a C minus will be invited and expected to attend the support sessions. You can call it async time. It's basically immediately after the whole class activities are done. Teachers will ask the students to this collaboration time through communication in the classroom. So it might be like, oh, hey, I need to talk to uh, this person and this person for just a sec. We, I just need to check in with you. It will be very, um, very respectful and low key, but we also want to make sure that students are receiving that communication and sticking around.
If the student doesn't stay, maybe they didn't hear it, maybe they just didn't want to, whatever, the teacher will email parents and students to formally let the student know, hey, you really, you got to stay after the class, the whole class part ends, so you and I can work through these missing assignments or the misunderstandings. If the student continues to miss two to three of these support interventions, the teachers are just going to contact me or Mr. Manzo to see what additional supports do we need to do to make sure that the, the student has taken advantage of those interventions that we have. Just remember, we're here to help and we're being just as creative and inventive as we can. I'm sure you felt that way in your jobs now too. Um, I'd just like to share my contact information again. This is my email address. New is the district cell phone number right here. That is great for calling or texting if that works better for you for communication. Please just make sure to identify yourself and your kid's first and last name so I know who I'm talking to whenever I reply. And then, of course, there's always Mr. Manzo's contact information as well. We're really looking forward to just continuing this journey with you and our students in our creativity and really getting, um, getting inventive to make sure all of our kids are succeeding. Thanks.